He's Connor Rogers of SNY. Every Jets game day. Catch him on pre and post game. Also, always catch him on Matthew Barry's Fantasy Football Happy Hour every day of the week as well. Connor, appreciate you taking the time, man. How are we doing? Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. It feels like Jets Patriots week. Uh, this is our yep. time to catch up or commiserate, whatever it may be. And it's, <laughs> that's what it's at now. I mean, the Patriots are 1-6. The Jets are 2-5. and five. Have you seen any improvement for this Jets team since firing Robert Sala, mm. demoting Nathaniel Hackett, promoting Todd Downing to play calling, and, of course, Jeff Ulbrich taking over as a play caller? So Downing's been a clear upgrade over Hackett. That bar was really low, yeah. specifically against the Bills, where – it's crazy, but if they make their two field goals, they win. They mm -hmm. win the game, and they're in first place somehow in the AFC East going into the Steelers game. Downing was really good in that game. It was their highest rate of motion of the season. It was their highest rate of play action of the season. He threw a lot of misdirection, a lot of different looks at the Bills that really had them on their heels. But at the end of the day, you don't make your kicks. You don't convert your red zone appearances to touchdowns. That's going to be the difference in the game. That's been a big problem for the Jets this year. They lost the Broncos by not making a field goal at the end of the game. That's part of football. If you don't have good special teams, you deserve to lose games. So downing has been a, a clear upgrade, and that was something it was rumored that Sala wanted to do anyway before he was fired. So that bar was really low. Now, the defense, to me, <clears throat> the same problems exist because it's a personnel issue for the large part. They can't mm -hmm. stop the run up front. Uh, you know, it felt like... They had started to turn the corner after they were terrible against San Francisco week one. They were not good against the first half against Tennessee. They had a really strong second half against Tennessee. They walloped New England on Thursday night football, and everybody looked around like, okay, they're cleaning up a lot of things. The offense looks better. And then everything kind of fell apart where they couldn't get anything going against the Broncos. They didn't stop the run against the Steelers at all in that game. And at the end of the day, the Jets, a lot of the Jets' problems remain the same. They had worried they had an energy problem with Salah, but that really hasn't improved since they got rid of him. At some point, it's on the guys in the locker room to improve that. So mm -hmm. not much has changed, to be honest with you. And it's there's not any more help coming on the you know, coming on the way. I know Hassan Reddick is making his way back, but outside of that, like this is the situation they're in. Connor, I'm a big fan of the name Connor. I like Connor McGregor. I like Connor McDavid. But when it comes to your last name, thank God you're not related to Aaron Rodgers. Because let me tell you something, Connor. There is no bigger hater, none, than Aaron Rodgers than me, my friend. I can't stand him, and he stanks. Now, here's my question to you Rodgers in New York. This is just what I wrote down in, in terms of job duties. GM, head coach, QB1, finger-pointing, blaming goat. I mean, how is he with the New York media is my question. How, how does he handle you guys? How do you guys handle him? Because he's got all these other gigs covered, clearly. I consider myself pretty fortunate that I don't find myself in the scrums because my day job in NBC keeps me there up in Stamford, mm -hmm. Connecticut, and then my Jets job keeps me in our lovely studio. But we have our reporters on the ground that, you know, you heard him say it last week. Number one thing, stop listening to you guys. And he mm -hmm. looks at the reporters, and I don't think that's the number one thing right now for the Jets. I watched the tape. They have a lot more problems than listening to what the media's concerns are about them. So this is the situation with Rodgers is you can act that way when you're the MVP of the league. You could even act that way when you're a top 12-ish quarterback on a franchise that's been desperate for one forever. Mm -hmm. The problem is coming off an Achilles, he looks 40 years old. He looks 45 years old, to be honest with you. He looks like a guy approaching 50. The body's banged up, not taking the hits the same. I think he, the arm is everything it's always been, mm -hmm. but this is somebody that has lost a step of that playmaking ability. Really, mm -hmm. the best version of it we saw was that Thursday night game against New England where they lost contain against him way too many times. After that, he's taken a lot of hits. He took a lot of hits against Minnesota. He's got three different little injuries right now where – you got to look in the mirror and say, and he, to be fair, he did say, I, it starts with me, I need to play better. But then there's always five things after that. Yep. And the reality is with the Jets, it starts there where they got to start scoring touchdowns. They got to put the, the opposition on their heels where their defense can play the way they want to play. Once again, we really only saw that against New England, to be honest with you guys. And that's not good enough. New England's a rebuilding team in this league. That's not a win that you pound your chest and say everything's right. Because then everything wasn't right when you lose to the Broncos of the world, the Steelers of the world. And everything is just kind of spiraling right now.
Yeah, I love that you point out, like, we keep bringing up the Thursday night because walking away from that game, I said, all right, well, you know, the Patriots got their butts kicked, but that is an Aaron Rodgers that looks vintage. Right. Was playing right. like a top three pass passer in the league. Diced him up. You know what? It was their day. It was and the energy concerned me, nothing else. We look back on that Thursday night game now, Connor, and I think that's a reflection of just how bad the Patriots were that the Jets looked that good yeah. against them. But do you see right now this team that – the excitement around Devontae Adams now in New York. And I wasn't someone that picked them to beat the Steelers, but I said, hey, he helps out a struggling offensive line to get the ball out quicker. There's a trickle-down effect to help out the offense. But is it getting to the point where, all right, look, like Rodgers isn't going to rescue you guys. Devontae Adams isn't going to rescue you guys. Like, right. The answers aren't on the roster. It's not on the coaching staff. It's, it's just watching this Jets team. Do you see them <clears> being <throat> redeemable to the point where they can be respectful, or do you think this is a team that it is? It's all there on paper, but until you yeah. actually see it, it means nothing. I mean, that's just the reality of it right now. And you can't, you know, try to be the NBA with an NFL team. And it feels mm -hmm. like the Jets have a little bit of that syndrome. This concerned me at the end of last year. They, while they were scrappy with getting nothing from the quarterback position, the defense played very tough. They had some skill, mm -hmm. uh, skill players that made plays in Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson. They were a scrappy seven-win team with nothing at quarterback. But I thought they fell into the trap of when the quarterback's right, Everything's going to be okay. And you lose sight of what you're supposed to do, right? They're not responsible against the run. They lost a lot of pieces up front on this defensive line that they didn't do a good enough job replacing. And then you get hit with a couple injuries on the back end and everything falls apart. That's not how it's supposed to be. You could look like a different team without DJ Reed and Michael Carter and Chuck Clark, but you still need to be able to hold the fort at some point. So I think they're a team that fell into the savior trap with Rodgers where they thought he can uplift them and uplift them above all of their other problems. And that just hasn't been the case. Now, can they do it? I'll, if you want the glass half full, right, which I'm yeah. sure the Jets do right now, one, the schedule falls off a cliff. It does. It's not, I'm not going to say they're playing, you know, Jacksonville or the Panthers every week, but they get New England again, which you have to win if you don't, the season's easily over. We know that much. To Texans on a short week, okay, that's tough. But the Texans haven't been amazing this year. They've been just good. And then you get a lot of matchups, whether it's Jacksonville. We'll see where Miami <clears> season is at. Obviously, um, uh, the Cardinals haven't really been great this year. The schedule is a lot different than how they started their year. That it's the ch your chance to get hot. But the Jets are in a ch uh, they're in playoff football mode now. It's like never where you want to be before Halloween, where it's oh our backs are against the wall. We probably got to win. I don't know, at least like eight to ten uh, is what it looks like right now mm -hmm. for them, and that's just a difficult spot to be in. And they haven't shown that they can get in rhythm like that yet. It is a difficult spot to be in, but with a great leader at quarterback, you'd have a chance. But unfortunately for the Jets, they don't have that. Connor, here's my question. I want to go backwards because George alluded to this, and he was right. He picked the Steelers in that game. I picked the Jets. Neither one of us saw a beatdown, and that's exactly what we got. What the hell happened in that game, A? B, what are the Jets going to be trying to improve from that game that we'll see uh, translate in the Patriots game? So it's so different, right, because of the way they play that the number one thing is the self-inflicted wounds. That's what they need to improve on. The bit, they're winning 15-6. to six. There is a minute and 23 seconds left of the half. They have the ball at the 35-yard line. It's second and four. He throws that post to Garrett Wilson that's picked off with two high safeties, and the slot corner is underneath it, where Brees Hall is running underneath Devontae and Garrett clearing out the coverage. It's second and four. If you throw the ball to Brees Hall, and he's probably going to make somebody miss and run for a long time. But mm -hmm. if he doesn't, it's a, at worst a first down with some timeouts in your pocket and a chance to kick a field goal before the half to go up 18 to 6 into the half. And the Steelers are not. A t I don't even care what people say about Russell Wilson right now. They're not a team that's going to bury themselves out of two score leads very often. Right. So that was number one. That's a self-inflicted wound that can't happen against New England or problems will spire. Number two, while this is a little different against New England because they don't have a guy like this right now. The way the Jets treated George Pickens is insane to me. It's second and 17. You have your backup corner, Brandon Eccles, in a, on an island with Pickens. Sauce Gardner is on the other side with no one to cover, and they don't give him any help on a second and 17. They have no pass rush because Will McDonald's doubled. They're only good pass rusher, and everybody else does nothing. So that's a situation to me that, number one, yeah, it'll help to have DJ Reed and Michael Carter back. Number two... Sauce has got to travel with number ones. I don't see New England as a team that has a number one that you want nope. to staple them to anyway. Nope. Nope. But giving the Steelers that moon ball shot on second and 17, which he caught, by the way, it looked like a basketball player just grabbing a rebound. 
for 40, 50 yards, whatever it was. That's bad coaching. That's bad scheme. And that's just overall bad football awareness, situational football. So that's not translatable to this game because I, is Drake May going to drop back and just start chucking it up in the air? Maybe he will, yeah. but the reality is I don't know if the Patriots want Drake May to be playing that way in this game, but the self-inflicted wounds against a Patriots defense that can be scrappy, that's something that the Jets need to change or they'll find themselves with short field situations against Patriots offense. Hey, I won't completely rule out Drake May dropping back and slinging it because he did do that against the Texans. Yeah. Yep. And he was taking licks, but... 246 yards and three touchdowns following week, 270 plus yards, yep. two touchdowns. Their best recipe for success is something I didn't want to happen, Connor. I don't want him throwing the ball 35 times right. a game. I want 25 because I don't want him taking hits. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, this is a Patriots defense. You mentioned Scrappy. They're allowing 145 rushing yards per game to running backs their last five games. Their secondary has been exploited. But is this a Jets team that can run the ball? Because they have the talent of Brees Hall and Braylon Allen, but we haven't seen the run game be there for them. They got it going against the Bills, where the Bills didn't really have an answer. And then it, it reverted back to its bad ways against the Steelers. So... Mm -hmm. It's really flipping a coin at this point. I know Keon White missed the first practice of the week. I haven't kept up with the injury status. If New England is thin up front, the Jets are going to try to run Brees and Braylon Allen right at them and take the game completely out of Rodgers' hands where you could limit him not only the turnover potential, but really getting hit is the issue there as well. So that's a, that's a really interesting way it's going to come out and, and see how they respond because – the Jets need to throw, be throw heavy in the beginning to get a lead, and then you could try to wear them out with the run. So it's been hot and cold, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. We've seen the best of Brees Hall. We've seen the worst of Brees Hall. The Steelers game is a little misleading because, yes, the Steelers stopped the run, but Brees Hall had almost 100 receiving yards in the first yep. half of the game right. on, on throws that any of us could make. Right. So <laughs> I, I know yep. we fall into the run defense stats, but... Those dump offs to me are an extension of the run. If your yes. linebackers can't come to balance and tackle, that's yeah. really bad run defense just in the pass game. So yeah. I wonder if they try to exploit New England's defense that way where, listen, we're going to dump the ball off to Brees. You could either tackle him or you can't. Uh, I know that that's something they've struggled with in the past against mm -hmm. him. And it'll be really interesting to see how they kind of try to take him out of this game. Great you bring up Keon White. He did return to practice, as did Anthony Jennings, who's their best run-stopping linebacker as well. Mm. You mentioned the pass rush. All you have is Will McDonald. The Hassan Reddick era debacle, whatever you want to call it. He's with the team now. What what is, what is the expectations from him? This will be his first game after full practice with the Jets. I think he's going to get 10 or 12 pass rush snaps in this yeah. game. I, I think he'll be active and ready to roll. And they, they've had no one do anything across from Will McDonald all year. Will McDonald has eight sacks and everyone else has been quiet. With Reddick, it's going to be a... Can we get the young quarterback into third and tens, third and eights, throw Reddick on the field, they do two wide nine rushers and say, whoever's out at tackle for New England this week, you're probably going to get him on an island and give him your best and make the quarterback either make a bad decision or take a sack. And is that going to be very effective? This I, That's really early for Reddick to be making an impact. Football shape is so different from yep. just working out at home. Yeah. But it is a, it's one of many problems for the Jets is they have no number two rusher to create havoc, and they're hoping that they can get that from him. I, it's weird. I feel like it's it's dangerous to bet against Reddick because he has so many sack incentives on this new contract that mm -hmm. he'll be out there going for it. Like, effort mm -hmm. won't be an issue. And But at the end of the day, it just feels like it, this might not be the game for that. Mm -hmm. Same question for Devontae Adams. I mean, we're talking game number two with him now, and, and I've seen clips of him, and I actually have liked – some of the sound bites I've heard from him. Yeah. You know, he's he's trying to take a leadership role here. He's saying, you know, at this point in my career, I just want to win. Uh, it, it's a lot of heartfelt pump-up speeches from Devontae Adams, and that's not something I'm used to seeing, but I like it. Sort of your take, your opinion of what we can expect to see from him in this game, just game number two with the Jets. So football, from a football aspect, Devontae helps a lot in this game because I think, and I know it wasn't perfect on Thursday night, the Thursday night game, but Gonzalez does a pretty good job against Garrett Wilson. And mm -hmm. yes, Garrett got him for the touchdown, but the full sample size, Christian can compete with Garrett Wilson one-on-one. -on -one, and then you're looking for the Conklins, Lazards, Mike Williams of the world to try to impact the game. Now you get Devontae Adams out there. It feels like New England's been a little vulnerable at corners, not named Christian Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. Are they going to keep that plan and say Gonzalez is going to trail Garrett or is Gonzalez going to go back and forth between them? That's where Devontae can really help in this one is that 
It does spread out the field a little bit more. It gives you another reliable number one wide receiver. And I think that's how the Jets are going to come out in the first half looking to attack New England, try to get ahead by throwing the ball and really split things up between Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams, who physically look completely fine against the Steelers. The hamstring injury is not a thing. Um, He doesn't he's not showing his age. So it's going to be interesting to see if they could really ramp things up in the second week together. It's amazing. He gets away from Las Vegas. All of a sudden, the hamstring's good. So maybe he's having some of Aaron's ayahuasca. Hey, as someone (laughs) that you don't just cover the Jets and you do a great job at it, but you grew up a Jets fan, Connor. You've been through the suffering. You've been through the pain. I'm not trying to put salt in the wound. That's okay. As you're watching this week unfold and this season unfold in Foxborough from New York, What's going through your mind as you witness Gerard Mayo <laughs> calling his team soft, walking it back, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick calling him out, and just what it is. I mean, they're off to a 1-6 to six start, and they look like the worst team in the Look NFL. at the joy in his face, George. <laughs> Does that not say it all? He doesn't need to say a thing. Look how happy this guy is. It's, it's the twilight zone. It's um, <laughs> Number one, I'll say this. I really liked Drake May a lot in this draft. For yep. my other job, full-time job, which is being a draft analyst, I want the best for Drake May and the best mm-hmm. situation for him to develop. And I was very concerned when he was the number three overall pick in the draft because I didn't like this offensive line on paper. They have work to do at receiver, but they'll get there. And this coaching staff, it had a lot to prove, but I don't know if it was one that you you bought into with excitement. You you were kind of just, let's see something from them. Now, the drama that's unfolded here so quickly is interesting because Mm. I don't know if people expected New England to be very good this year. Most didn't. The the betting market will tell you that nobody did. They were picked to finish last in the AFC East. It's going to be a rebuilding year. They were purposely, I think, protecting Drake Bay the first couple weeks of the season to not have him battered behind a poor offensive line. And it's it's somehow still imploded on Mayo. I guess the comment calling the team soft was not received well by many, probably players in the locker room, but Belichick felt like it was time to defend a lot of players that he was responsible for. And there's a lot of varying opinions on that. I think Mm -hmm. Belichick did a really bad job with this roster at the end of his tenure. And that's not an unfair insult. Bill Belichick's one of the greatest coaches of all time. The GM, Bill Belichick, at the end could not keep up the head coach of Bill Belichick. And I think that's why it felt a little personal to him that maybe he thought Mayo was saying... This is the roster I was handed. It's going to take us a couple years. Get used Mm -hmm. to it. We see Mm -hmm. that in the NFL every year. Guys take over a job. Sean Payton did it to Nathaniel Hackett with an absolute razor blade. And you know why it's a a bad look is because it looks like excuse making. But then when you actually like huddle up on the corner, you're like, he's not wrong. Like, how is he supposed (laughs) Mm -hmm. to get, you know, by with that? So I think what concerns me with Mayo, I don't care what he thinks of the roster. I don't care that the team can't win games. It's that... They look in over their heads right yes. now, mm-hmm. New England, it, whether it's the game plan, whether it's situational football. And that, to me, like you said, George, growing up a Jets fan, it's, it doesn't even make sense. It's jarring. New England, What you could always guarantee with New England, mm-hmm. even when they were at the end of the run with Belichick, is they were going to be ready to play, they were going to be disciplined, and they were going to have a game plan that made sense. And unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of that in the Gerard Mayo era. Now, I think he deserves some time this season to actually turn that around. But it just feels like it's getting really late early right now. Yeah, it feels like it's getting away from him. The grasp that yes. he has on the locker overwhelmed. room. Overwhelmed. It, it, yeah, he's in over his head. He's overwhelmed. He's not learning how to talk to the media. We have wide receivers. We're seeing them celebrate touchdowns by telling agents to call them and trade for them. It's just, it's left oh, and right. And you're 100% God. right on the coaching staff. You have Alex Van Pelt, never called plays before, but been an OC. Demarcus Covington, never been a DC before. And it's at the point where you want to see a head coach be more hands-on with the defense. Because the worst part of this all is, Drake May, who last time you were on this, Connor, you said it. He was my QB2 coming out of the draft, and you're 100% yeah. right, and I, lo- I love your analysis. Drake May gave this offense another layer to work with. He got them to 21 points, Yep. and the defense has gotten worse and worse. That's the worst reflection of a defensive-minded head coach. But you're 1,000% right. He should get the full season. We'll just see how it ends from that point on. Look, Trav, what I tell you about Connor, man, even when he could take the low road and punch down, yep. he's a better man, and he goes full analyst and is a professional <laughs> when saying how bad the Pats are. Connor, no I always appreciate having you on, man. Listen, there's there's no victory lapping from a Jets end right now, okay? <laughs> we're, we're both just sitting here in the mud. It's, it's just a matter yeah. of who gets deeper and deeper. But it was great talking to you guys. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Connor. Connor, always appreciate you taking the time. He's Connor Rogers of SNY. Every Jets game day, catch him on pre and post on SNY. Make sure to follow him on social media. He's one of the best. Connor, till next time, it'll be when, I don't know. Thank God they're done playing each other at this point. <laughs> it'll be the draft for both sides.
I love it. We'll have you on for the draft because the Patriots need it, and I'll give you a break talking about this bad team. Connor Rogers of SNY, thanks for taking the time again, man.